welcome back to Open Line. I'm Chris Davis sitting in with you here tonight. Dr. Lori Woods is our guest tonight. We are talking about mass shootings, the role they've played in history, and just even dissecting uh, the current examples of them so far just even this year. I want to get to the phones because we have a couple callers that have called in with questions or comments. First, we have uh, Mike. Mike, welcome to Open Line. Go ahead. Hey, how you doing tonight? I'm uh, doing well. Uh, and uh, hello to your guests as well. Thank you. I want to ask her, what does she believe it's going to take to really like grab a, the shoulder of America or basically the politician to say, hey, forget the gun lobbyists, stop letting them influence you, help stop letting them fund your campaign so you can stay in power. And I'm wondering, I'm asking your guests this, what do you think if like Emmett Till's mother decided that she didn't want her son to be hidden with all the atrocities that had happened to him, being killed, uh, dragged, thrown in, in the water. Uh, and But she wanted the world to see what had, what had happened to her son based on race and hate. Right. And it did wake the nation up to say, we can't let this happen. Do you think we should have something that's graphic like that? like we have with these new tobacco commercials that have been on for the oh. last 10 years or so where you actually see patients talking and then at the end you see that that person has since passed uh, based on smoking. Do you think we need something like that or do you still think the Republicans or those who don't want some type of gun control would just basically turn a blind eye like they did with the attempted coup on our Capitol where some were like, this is disgusting, those who supported Trump but as the days went on, they fell back in line with their leader. So I would just like to comment, and I hope you guys have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mike, for the call. Lot, lots to unpack there yeah. from what he had to say. Yeah. Can you start from the beginning? You remember what he <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think um, his overall point was, and, and we were kind of talking about this before the show started, is there anything that really can capture the uh, attention of the country to try to find something sustainable here, do you think? If murdering little kids doesn't do it, what is? What will? Um, we had Newtown. We had, and then others in between, and then we had the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School shooting, and we had a, we had a big um, march here in Nashville. It was actually started by a first-year Vanderbilt student who went to the, had gone to that school, and students marched, and uh, I remember a student from Belmont wrote this song, uh, some of the thing about save your thoughts and your prayers, and you know, there was a huge movement, and those students got a lot of press, and, and there were some ads, there have been some ads, um, and then we all just kind of move on until the next time it happens, and so if killing little kids in Texas isn't going to do it. I don't know what will. It, it's going to, other than it's going to take um, people constantly pressuring their politicians, not just the the groups, every town for gun safety or Moms Demand Action against um, gun violence. It's going to take normal, you know, ordinary people constantly pressuring their politicians because what we tend to do. Uh, as a society is we're horrified, we say something has to be done, we make a lot of noise, and then something takes the place of that. You know, it's, we move on to something else. I think the second part of uh, Mike's uh, comment and question, um, which I thought was interesting, is, mm -hmm. you know, um, I, I don't know how many parallels you can draw between something like this and tobacco, but uh, to, to make point of gra really grabbing your attention, right. it's certain that those, those commercials grab your attention. Maybe so. I mean, it's going to have to take it's going to have to take something or some organization with enough money to create those ads. And maybe I don't know. Do we do we want to see pictures of dead children? I don't know what it's I don't know what it's going to take. You know, we we have to wake up because if we don't, we're just going to go. We're going to be lulled back into oh well. So let's little do a little something, and then we'll move on until it happens again. I want to bring Brad into the conversation. He's been waiting patiently on the uh, line. Brad, go ahead. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of uh, pushback, I think, on like banning the assault weapons because of the Second Amendment. And I was wondering, what is your interpretation of the Second Amendment and why do you think it exists? <laughs> Obviously, another, we're, we're, we're getting great calls tonight. Yeah. Thank you, Brad. Gosh, I, you know, I, I've, I am not a constitutional scholar. I'm not an attorney. Um, I 
when I read the Second Amendment, I think about, you know, a, a well-armed militia. I don't think about all of us carrying guns around. Um, it, it, ter it terrifies me that we have so many people carrying guns, people who, you know, maybe shouldn't be carrying guns because they're not going to be responsible about it. So um, I don't interpret the Second Amendment that way, but it doesn't matter what I think because I am not the Supreme Court. Absolutely. Um, Joseph uh, is also uh, on the phone lines with us. Joseph, go ahead. Welcome to Open Line. Um, hello. I was going to say in places like England that you can have a gun, but it's regulated by the local police, for instance. They can go in your home and make sure you've got your gun stored where it's supposed to be and what kind of gun you have and things like that. And... Uh, we, our Constitution has been amended 27 times. Um, I don't see why we can't make a sensible amendment on, on such things. And, to, uh, and at the time the Constitution was written, they had muzzle-loading guns. And, and they got by, you know, they hunted and fished and that type of thing, and they killed plenty of game back then with muzzle loaders but that was what was legal at the time now one lady called in and said the gatling no it wasn't legal until the civil war but we need some kind of sensible uh amendment or something but anyway thank you yeah thank you joseph we appreciate the call well he he brings up a good point because i actually did some st i studied um law enforcement and guns in England and Ireland and got to go over there and talk to cops and spend some time and first of all they think we're nuts with our guns right in England and Ireland and Scotland the same and 95 percent of the police officers don't carry guns they they've just had 10 years ago just started carrying mace but they see themselves more as guardians than warriors. There's a term, actually, the first time I heard that was, a, was when uh, former President Obama talked about it. But um, they don't carry guns, and Ireland, same story. And they do, and he's absolutely right. If you, handguns are very difficult to get, although criminals can still get them some, but to get a permit is very difficult. If you have a gun, it's got to be a long gun, and it has to be, you have to be able to prove that you have a place to hunt and they do inspect them. I was asking someone in Ireland, and he said, no, they really do. They people go out and they look at your gun and, and interview you. Now, would that ever happen in this? Impossible. It would not happen here. Well, um, you know, I can't help but thinking, because I grew up here in Tennessee, um, and uh, as someone that uh, went hunting with dad, you know, had to do a hunter safety course in Tennessee. Uh, if you're born after 1989 in Tennessee, you either have to go through, you, for hunting, you have to go through a hunter safety course to be able to get a hunter's uh, license, and the same thing for boating. You have to go through a boating exam if you're born after 1989 here in Tennessee. Um, but a as you mentioned, I would imagine just to have gun ownership and the type of uh, tests like that, that would be a huge hurdle to pass and probably not likely. No, I, I think, I think, I, may be I think impossible it. <laughs> is a better, is a better, yeah, I, I just, it just wouldn't happen. It just wouldn't happen. I mean, first of all, we've got, I don't know, part of the estimates, 350 million, gun, I don't know. We don't even, we don't even know. You can, there are all kinds of estimates about it, but um, we, you know, the, the problem is not the responsible person who has a gun. The problem is the person who leaves it in their bag and tries to, forgets it's in the gym bag. And TSA, let's see, last year they seized almost uh, 6,000 firearms at, at airport checkpoints. Eighty-some percent of those were loaded. Those were not people who were trying to sneak guns onto planes. Those are people who forgot it was in the gym bag. And they were mostly white males, by the way. But it was people who said, oh, I didn't know it was there. Or the people, you know, leaving their guns in their car and it gets stolen. And the police then have to deal with that. Absolutely. Um, we're having a fascinating conversation tonight with uh, Dr. Lori Woods. We need to fit in another break. We have a couple more calls on the line. You can join them too. Numbers there on your screen. We're having a great conversation tonight. More of Open Line after this.